Hello, I'm Samantha. I'm here from my bed wearing my pajamas because let's face it, what's the point of being a stay-at-home mom if you can't just wear your pajamas all day long? Today I'm going to be talking about breastfeeding after breast cancer because I searched a lot for this kind of information when I was pregnant trying to figure out if that would be something that would work out for me. But shockingly, there's not a lot of information about people who have breastfed after breast cancer because there's not that many women who have had cancer this young, so there's not that much research out there about it. I mean, there's not really even much research about people having babies after breast cancer, so that's a whole thing on its own. But as more young women get breast cancer, obviously this is becoming more common. I wanna put a disclaimer out there that this is gonna be all about my experience and what I've heard from other people. Um, so this might not be how it works for you, but I thought I would put out this information because like I said, there's not that much information out there and I just thought it might help somebody. So I was diagnosed with stage four breast cancer in March of 2019 and I got pregnant in March of 2022. I guess that's when, that's when my last period was, was March, 2022. I went through chemo, um, I had surgery, which was a lumpectomy with lymph node removal um, on my left side and I had radiation. Then after radiation, I did hormone therapy and a targeted therapy for two years, and I came off of that and then got pregnant after that. I wanna say that I did not have a double mastectomy, but there are some people that I've heard of that have had a double mastectomy and they can't breastfeed, but if they've had reconstruction, they can do things where they like put a feeding tube in and the baby can still like kind of latch onto the breast and so you can kind of like fake it. I don't know really anything about that. I've just heard that's a thing. So this is not the video for finding out information about that. I'm just gonna be telling you about my experience um, with my lumpectomy and my radiation. So when you get pregnant, your breasts start to grow. And it was very noticeable to me that my right one was growing and my left one wasn't really growing. My left side is the side that had the cancer, that had the lumpectomy, and had the radiation. Before I was pregnant, both my breasts were basically the same size. And during pregnancy, the right one just kept growing and growing and growing. And now, um, after pregnancy, my right one is probably like two cup sizes larger than the left. So this was kind of concerning to me. I was like, maybe the left one's just not gonna work. And am I going to have enough supply to feed my baby? During my pregnancy, I didn't have any sort of colostrum leaking out that a lot of people deal with like in pregnancy. I didn't have any sort of thing like that. So I was just like, is there anything going on at all? Like, am I going to have any milk? So fast forward, I was in the hospital, I gave birth and I used both sides. So my baby fed on both sides in the hospital and there was basically no problem. She actually latched on really well. Um, it was interesting because clearly the left side and the right side were different. The, my left nipple is different than the right side just because of like the surgery and the radiation that it went through. I don't really know how to describe it that well, but like when the baby would suck on the right side, the nipple would kind of pop out more and I think it was just easier for her to be on that side and the left side not as much. But like I said, she took both sides and she was fine. It was just kind of like they were different. She actually liked being in the football position on the right side, but on the left she liked more of like the, is it the cradle hold? I don't know, the one where you put them across. My milk had not come in yet. I just had the colostrum, but just keep in mind that the first couple days of your baby's life they do not need to eat that much. Their stomachs are really small. Around like the fourth day of my baby's life, my milk had come in by that point and she stopped liking the left side. Um, it was kind of obvious she would get more upset when I would feed her from that side and then I would feed her on both sides, like at each feeding sometimes and she would spend longer on the right and enjoy it more on the right. By day five, I basically decided to give up using the left side. Um, she would cry whenever I would try to put her on the left and she would kind of look over at the right and she would be like, that's what I want. Like she would side eye over there and be like, I want this side. And she would just cry and she wouldn't, she would latch, but then she would just like get upset and she was just not having the left side anymore. So clearly my milk had come in, but really mainly only on the right side. And so she was not enjoying the left side. And back in the hospital, when we were only talking about colostrum and she was just 
you know, sucking and on all that, she was fine with the left side. But, you know, once the milk came in, she noticed a huge difference between the sides and would really only take the right side. So I gave up using the left side completely at that point and I didn't feel too bad about it because I'm a part of this group on Facebook called Babies After Breast Cancer. So I'll link that below if you want to join that if you are pregnant and you've had breast cancer. It's a really nice group. Um, and I had asked a question in there about breastfeeding and Everyone who commented basically said that they tried on their radiated side, but they would only get a few drops and it wasn't even like enough to do anything. So I think everyone who commented had given up using their radiated side like a week after giving birth. Some of them were telling me that they had to supplement with formula and some of them were telling me that their non-radiated side just made up for it and they were able to give their baby enough. So that's what I was hoping for. I was hoping that my right side would just make up for it. And it really is amazing how the body works. That's exactly what happened. My right side did make up for it. So I did just continually use the right side and she got enough milk. Like it was good. There was one point when we thought she might not be getting enough milk. And I think we gave her like a bottle of formula one time when she was like a week old. Um, but we never did that again. And you know, who knows why she was crying then and because babies cry for all sorts of reasons. <laughs> but she was gaining weight and you know everything was fine so clearly my right side had made up for my left side. When my baby was about a week old I noticed that there were some stains in my bra on my left side so I was like oh is there milk in this side that maybe my baby just doesn't like this side and she just doesn't like the nipple or something so maybe there is milk over there. So I tried pumping over there and I only got like a couple drops and I tried this multiple times and yeah, only like a couple drops, like not even enough for it to get sucked down into the bottle, like by the pumping machine thing. So it was basically on par with what everybody else said that yeah, they had some milk on that side but it was just so little that it didn't even matter. I was a little worried about it because I did not want to get mastitis because I didn't want to just stop using the left side and then there was still milk over there and then it would get infected. Didn't want to deal with that so I was like maybe I should try just pumping um, but I had no problem with that. Um, there just really wasn't anything over there and it would only be a couple drops that would leak out every once in a while and it would stain a little bit inside my bra. After about a month or so of breastfeeding only on my right side that completely went away so the left side doesn't do anything at all now there's no leaking over there nothing and nobody else in my group said that they had a problem with mastitis over there either so don't worry too much about it if you're clearly just not getting any milk not to say that it can't happen because it can um, but if you're trying and you're trying and there's like not much coming out you probably don't have to worry too much about it one thing I do want to say about breastfeeding is that it was super, super painful. Everyone kept telling me that it would get better in two weeks, that two weeks something clicks and then the, it doesn't hurt as much. That didn't happen for me. It was still incredibly painful and everyone just kept telling me how good my baby's latch was so there wasn't a problem with that and it was just my nipples were sensitive and I don't know if it took longer for me because just because of that or if it was because I was only using one side and so there was more strain on the right side than there would be if I was like using both breasts. But it took two months for it to get kind of comfortable for me. Um, after I gave birth I had some tearing so my um, OB gave me some pain medication to take and by like the third or fourth day I was still taking that medication, but it wasn't because I was in pain from the tearing that I had, it was because I was in pain from breastfeeding. <laughs> Around five weeks, I was experiencing just extreme, excruciating pain. Like, I would be holding back tears when she would latch, and it was so, so painful. For 48 hours, I exclusively pumped, which was super hard for me. Oh my gosh, like, to those people who exclusively pump, I don't know how you do it. It's so much harder than just breastfeeding from the breast because you have to have time to pump and then you have to have time to give the baby the bottle that you pumped. So it's like you're basically just 
worrying about feeding the baby all day long. So for 48 hours, that's basically what I did. I was basically just feeding the baby all day long and just pumped and gave her the bottle and she hated it. She absolutely hated it because she was used to the breast and she didn't like the bottle as much. She took the bottle and she drank, but she would cry. She would finish the bottle too quickly. It was, it was not good and I hated it. But after the 48 hours of pumping, it was so much better. Basically my baby was kind of like pulling skin off of the nipple and so there would be kind of like these opened wounds on the nipple. That's why it was causing so much pain. So after 48 hours that gave it time to heal um, and then uh, I didn't have a huge problem after that. It was still incredibly painful like not but not like excruciating pain anymore. Um, and then like I said around when my baby hit two months something just worked and it's not as painful anymore which is great um but i will say it took way longer than what anyone would tell me and the reason that i kept at it for so long was because i was going to be going on a trip when she was three months old and i was gonna be taking her on planes and we were gonna be going to disney world and i didn't want to have to worry about formula feeding because I figured that would just be harder. Um, I figured it'd be harder to like make sure I had bottles and to be able to clean the bottles and to be able to have the formula ready to go to feed her out when we're out in public, which would just be harder than being able to just, you know, put her on the breast. And that's the reason that I kept at it for so long. If we didn't have that trip, I probably would have quit earlier on. I will not judge anyone who decides to stop breastfeeding because it is a lot of hard work. But if so for some reason you want to just keep at it and keep trying, it might just take longer for you than it takes for other people. Even if you're doing everything right and your baby's latching correctly, you still could be having tons of pain just because some people are more sensitive than others. My baby is almost four months. By the time this video goes up, she will be four months and we have been exclusively breastfeeding that entire time um, and we have had no problems. I do not by any means have an oversupply of milk um, but my right side has made up for the left and we have been able to exclusively breastfeed. She's been gaining weight well. So yeah I just wanted to share that and I wanted to put that all out there so if there's anyone watching this that is pregnant after breast cancer and they're worried about breastfeeding and if they'll have supply or wondering if they even can breastfeed I just want you to know that it is possible and there are a lot of people, especially on that Facebook group um, that I will link down below, that had a lot of success breastfeeding after breast cancer. Also if you're like me and you've been searching YouTube for like tips on breastfeeding and trying to get ahead so you know what to do when your baby's born, you'll probably see a lot of people talking about these Silverette nursing cups. Yeah, they are worth it. If you're wondering, they're worth it. So I'll put a link to these in the description too. I'm not a doctor, there's not much research about this, but if you guys have any questions about breastfeeding after breast cancer in my experience specifically, leave a comment or message me on Instagram if you want it to be private. Um, my Instagram is in the description also. And I think that's it for the video, so if you are interested in any of my other videos, check out those on my channel and subscribe if you want. Yeah, that's all. Bye.